Hi, and welcome back to another episode of History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, Owen Chow, and today is one of my favorite type of episodes where I get to show and tell uh, some different uh, CDs for you today. And uh, what better time, what better place in front of my CD uh, collection here. Um, so, uh, I just uh, did a, a, a set piece uh, with the Happy Console Gamer, and we kind of went over this uh, CD collection. But I'm going to go over some uh, some special selections in higher detail uh, to give you some suggestions on uh, some music that you want to, want to listen to. Okay? So my first, uh, one of my favorite TV shows and uh, the third series that we actually sub uh, Arctic Animation has subtitled is Pat Labor. So again, I've uh, brought a selection of uh, Pat Labor CDs up here. Uh, again, the most popular ones that most people are familiar with is the ones that are the movie. So here's the uh, for the Pat Labor the movie. Uh, the Image CD, which is a 1999 version of the release of that one. They also have uh, the Pat Labor 2 movie, uh, the main CD, this is one here. They also made this one called the Pre-Soundtrack, so this is sort of like the Image CD before the CD uh, of that particular one. All right. Um, the TV series also has a, is a, one of my favorite ones. So again, uh, this is the soundtrack for the actual TV series uh, for Pat Labor, this one right here. And then they made uh, two image uh, theme song collection ones. So this one uh, is the uh, Pat Labor theme collection special. And this one is the Pat Labor theme volume one. Okay. Contains, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, everything things like, like Condition Green, uh, Midnight Blue, uh, things like that as well. On that one. Okay. Now the OVA series was kind of unique. Um, they released a set of, uh, of OVA uh, CDs. Okay. Each of them have the, a special theme, and I'll read you them out, and you can kind of guess what the theme is, all right? So, for volume one, okay, this is one here, and it goes by the codename Interface, okay? Uh, this is volume two, all right? It goes by the name Intercept, all right? This is volume three, and here this one has Intermission, all right? Uh, volume four, Infinity. Nice. Starting to see the theme here. Uh, yeah. Volume five. All right. Let's refer to this one as Phase Five. Okay. And the last one, Volume Six, is Intention. Okay. So kind of an interesting theme now. Because again, those all music for the uh, the OVA series as well as the TV series uh, at the beginning there. Um, they also released a whole bunch of live CDs, okay, so this is the, uh, uh Pat Labor Concert Tour in 92, uh, where they basically have a bunch of live music and that kind of stuff on this one. Uh, is it, uh, the, the, uh, image album for Noah, specifically for this one here, that's a, a live version there. And then, uh, the, the theme music or the, uh, your background music, BGMs and stuff, uh, is, uh, arranged by, uh, a Kenji Kawai, so this is his album for that one, uh, his, his music. Okay, now they also released uh, what they refer to as phases. Okay, and then I showed you some of the early phases here. Uh, this is like a phase two, phase three, and phase four. These are all for the TV series. So these are a lot of CDs, and then of course people are kind of, kind of going, well, how do you know which one to get? And like, you know, I don't want to get too many of them uh, in case there's something that, that, that's all complete. Well, they also released these ones here. These ones are the um, complete vocal collection, so just like the singing of, of, of the Pat Labor. Uh, this one here is the complete vocal collection, and this one here is the Pat Labor uh, single collection. Okay, now I'm gonna put one other one here, this, one, this particular one here. This is one called Contact. Okay, now the, the reason I pulled this one out because this is rather unique. Um, as you know, most CDs are, you know, as you would look in a regular CD are etched in silver, okay? All right. This particular one is etched in gold, okay? And uh, the reason why they do this particular one uh, in this particular fashion is this one is, is referred to as a CDV disc, okay? Um, the first bunch of, of tracks on it, um, the first six tracks on it are, are audio, so you can put it into a regular CD player and you can play regular music with it. The last track on this one is, is actually video. So if you throw it into your laser displayer, you can actually play the, the video content on this one. Uh, so basically it's got a, a dual formatted disc. And so yeah, so there's actually a, 
kind of you know, like sort of a music video uh, on this particular disc. Uh, so, that, so that's Contact for Pat Lee. The next series of CDs I want to give, uh, give a suggestion to is the CDs for Project Echo. Now, Project Echo is one of these rather uh, strange but very good uh, movie se uh, series. Uh, again, it, uh, it's a centerpiece for a lot of uh, inspiration for a lot of artists because they, again, it has uh, you know state of the you know, state of the art sort of animation techniques and that kind of stuff uh, in it, which a lot of people have gone on to use as their influence for uh, different things like comics and also you know the other various animations. Okay, so Project Echo has four parts, and again, so there's four different CDs for there in each of the different movies. Now. This is Project Echo number one, and one of the, my favorite songs on this one is the, is sort of like that uh, mood, uh, romance song, that's it. So all the entire edition for In Your Eyes, uh, definitely this one right here is, is one of my favorite ones there, okay. This is the soundtrack for uh, Project Echo Volume 2, okay. Now this is a kind of a unique one, this is the soundtrack for uh, uh, Project Echo uh, 3, okay. You know, my favorite song on this one is that... Uh, Get a Chance by Bobby. Uh, it actually ranked pretty high, uh, you know, made top 100 uh, uh, that year, according to the best. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, But this particular CD, Volume 3, also came with this giant Project Echo uh, Robo figurine. Uh, so, the, so basically, this is one of those uh, extra gifts if you ordered early and ordered the, the, the you can get this uh, special little extra, uh, kind of, uh, so that's volume three. Now, um, volume four is this one right here. Uh, that's the soundtrack for volume four. Okay, I'm gonna go into some old school uh, gaming here. Now, um, when other people, uh, my friends are all, you know, playing on their, you know, on their Ataris, uh, their ColecoVisions and televisions, you know, one of the things that, that, that I more or less played more on was I started on the Tandy computers and the Apple II computers, and that was a really strong influence for me. So, one of the games I ended up playing and spending a lot of time on, and even you know so much to to, to build, uh, you know, uh, a a character modification program for that, is a game called Wizardry. Now you can imagine Apple II game. Now we're talking like eight bit computers here. They actually had a soundtrack for it. Yes, as a matter of fact, they made uh, the soundtracks for. Uh, of uh, Wizardry 1 and Wizardry 2, which is the uh, the the, the uh, 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 uh campaign. And uh, the reason why I'm pulling these ones up is not only is it really very uncommon to see a soundtrack for a, like a game uh, of, the, of this particular old uh, nature, but the tie-in is is that the, the the company that makes this is is, is called Surtech. Okay, it was run by Andrew uh, Greenberg and a person named Robert Woodhead. Now, if that name sounds familiar, Robert Woodhead is also the person who uh, created Animiego, which uh, releases titles like uh, Bubblegum Crisis, Golf Force, uh, you know, Riding Bean, and etc. And of course, later on, uh, they're releasing Orange Road as well. So that's your tie-in. He actually was the uh, you know was the, uh, the head of Surtech at the time they released this uh, soundtrack for Wizardry. So again, if you're interested, check these out. Wizardry. My next collection of C CDs I'm going to suggest is one of a very popular game for Street Fighter, okay? And the ones I pulled out, I mean, there's lots of CDs for Street Fighter, but the, the ones I'm, uh, the particular ones I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out are ones of particular note. Um, I'm gonna pull out these particular ones, okay? Because uh, I really like the artwork for these. These particular Street Fighter CDs are drama CDs, but the artwork for them is done by Satoshi Ushihara, okay? Now these done, uh, you know, great work on the front covers, but he also does some really nice artwork for uh, Chung Lee because he likes drawing the female characters um, for this particular character as well. So, uh, so yes, he does Street Fighter again. You learn who uh, Satoshi Ushara. He's the guy that did uh, Plastic, Little, Plastic Little. Okay. Okay. So again, that's you know that you know that's sort of a, an artistic favorite one of mine. Um, the other really interesting Street Street Fighter one is uh, going to mention is this particular one. Now the reason why I have to select this particular one is this is sort of the vocal collection of Street Fighter 2. Now you think, okay, well, you know, when you pick a particular stage, it plays a background BGM, say like, for example, Ryu stage, okay? Um, what they've done on this album is they've got singers of various different types, artists, 
to actually put a vocal track to those. So for example, if you like playing Yu's theme um, uh, on this particular CD, they've got a uh, singer from the very famous band, Hikaru Genji. Okay, he sings uh, the vocal part for Yu's th uh, song. Okay, um, another favorite character is Chuck Lee. Okay, her song is sung by uh, a woman from the band Doko. Now, if you're wondering, well, who's Doko? Well, Doko. Going right to my rack here. It's famous for this one, okay? Doko does the uh, the theme music for uh, Ranma One Hat, okay? So uh, the, uh, the singer for that movie is doing some Lee's theme song, okay? And uh, also, uh, if you want to know what the, the one English track on here, uh, M. Bison, which is in this case going to be The Boxer, right? Uh, it's sung by one of the, uh, uh, by one of the uh, artists uh, that supports B.B. King, okay? So, one of the background uh, the people on that particular one. He sings uh, the, 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 the track for M. Bison. So, again, something interesting you want to check out if you have, if you have a chance. What does each of the various themes sound like. And here we go. This one will give you that. Okay, the next one I want to go over is another very popular animation because of the fact that uh, it uh, portrays advanced Dungeons & Dragons. It's probably one of the, the most accurate um, uh, portrayals of a uh, Dungeons & Dragons uh, in an anime. Okay, and that is The Record of Lotus Wars. Okay, so here's a, here's a few uh, soundtracks for The Record of Lotus Wars. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the main... Uh, uh, a soundtrack for that one. This is an, uh, an image soundtrack before they actually released the OVAs. They had this particular one. Uh, also, this one is a, also one of the uh, image soundtracks uh, for that as well. Okay, this is from the main uh, soundtrack line. Um, my funny story about the Record of Lotus Wars is when we were subtitling, uh, our generation was subtitling the Record of Lotus Wars, uh, there was a natural break between uh, the episodes. Uh, they went from one to four, then uh, uh, five to seven, okay, and then there was a break in the in the next one for because it goes from then uh, eight to ten. Um, uh, at that break point, uh, what I did is is uh, on uh, the third of one of these uh, Rock and Roll Lost War CDs, there was an actual an English version of the opening theme song uh, for uh, Rock and Roll Lost War. Right? So I thought, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the audio dub feature on the SVHS player and basically overdub the Japanese version with the English version. And this caused such a uh, an uproar on the internet at that time because again, this is a, you know messaging systems uh, on Usenet. And a, a, a lot of people were like, uh, you know, surprised that they made an English version as well as they were kind of, um, uh, shall we say, uh, you know, uh, not quite pleased with the the, the uh, uh, how they uh, you know sang the English uh, song because again the, the, there's certain uh, phonetic words uh, that are not quite uh, the same because again R's and L's and and B's and V's and that kind of stuff are not in the uh, not in the, in the Japanese uh, phonetic so uh, you know slight you know, slight you know, pronunciation things are in there so again uh, it's an interesting version to listen to if you had a chance. Uh, have a listen to that. It's a record of Lotus Wars. I get asked sometimes uh, to give a good suggestion on some of the uh, you know classic Studio Ghibli titles, okay? And uh, some people always say, well, you know, which one should I get? Which you know has the best sort of music and that kind of stuff uh, for them? Uh, my recommendation, and of, of many, because they made a whole bunch of the different mix CDs, is this particular one, okay? It's called Animation the Movie. But it contains the uh, uh, you know the, the, the songs from Nausicaa, uh, Laputa, uh, Totoro, and also has this, this other one called Arion. So kind of a, you know, a forgotten title, okay? But uh, no, it, 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 I bought this particular particular one out because um, when I was looking for anime uh, soundtracks and that kind of stuff, and uh, you know thinking of anime ending theme song, I really like the that. Uh, song for uh, Ariel, right? the very, uh, kind of a very haunting female voice um, that does that particular song. But it took me a while to actually find a CD version of it, and then they actually, on, in this uh, particular set, they released uh, this uh, particular CD when this contains that song on it. So 
you might want to check this one out. It also has a good mixture of all the ones like, you know, Tenari no Totoro. Uh, you know, that, that's always a very uh, popular one there as well. And it also contains the, uh, the ending theme song to, for uh, Laputa, the Castle in the Sky. Uh, also a very good uh, ending theme song. So you might check this one out for that. Uh, Gundam ends up being always a very popular title. Always people asking me, you know, uh, you know, you seem like a lot of Gundam. What are your favorite Gundam titles? Okay, well, you know, Gundam's a pretty big series because it has always you know many different renditions of uh, the different types of Gundams. Um, but you know, but you know, there are different ones that uh, I particularly like. Um, uh, one of the ones that you might want to check out is uh, Gundam Double Away O. Okay. Uh, this one has a really nice opening theme song, okay, uh, which is uh, uh, on there. So you might want to just check out these ones, Gundam uh, 008 O, okay, let's get one two. Okay, uh, probably by far one of the best uh, Gundam uh, songs and soundtracks out there is uh, this one here, Gundam MS-018. Okay, my favorite song on this one is the ending song, 10 Years After. Okay, that's probably one of, you know, one of the most popular uh, you know, Gundam in general, uh, theme song. So you want to check that one MS-08 theme. Okay. Um, but the, the, probably the most general one, if you want to just sort of get an old, good overlay of, of some of the classic Gundam uh, series, I would suggest this one here. This is called the Gundam Singles History. Okay, this covers uh, mo the original Mobile Suit Gundam, Zeta Gundam, and Double Zeta Gundam. Okay, and again, uh, there's you know, a lot of uh, good songs on this one. I, uh, you know, I really like uh, you know both the opening and the theme songs for uh, uh, Zeta Gundam, and uh, of course um, it has Silent Voice, which is one of my favorite one for Double Zeta Gundam, and it also has Anime Genai, which is the you know, name that I gave my store. Uh, which is again a, a, sort of a test for all those people that you know, determine how much of an anime fan you are because you kind of wonder well, why do you call an anime store it's not anime so there you go now you know why you ask me that question so I know that you at least did uh, ask uh, you probably at least ask somebody uh, you know who's Japanese well what does anime I mean well oh, it, it, it means it's not anime well why did you just call your store it's, uh, it's an anime store it's not anime and then, of course, that uh, indicates to me that, uh, well, you may be not quite as an otaku enough to know that uh, it's a theme song for Double Zeta Gundam. All right?